Hello, it's Danny from Conscious Calisthenics here. So I have a guest, Jin, who I am instructing through a beginner calisthenics chest workout that you can follow along with. And first up, she is doing incline push-ups because incline push-ups are way easier for beginners. A lot of beginners cannot just do standard push-ups on the floor. And for this one, you wanna do around 20 reps. And make sure you do full range of motion like she is. She's coming all the way down. She's not resting her chest on the bar. Don't rest your chest at all on whatever bar you're using. The lower the bar is, the harder it's going to be. So find an elevation that challenges you so you can do a decent amount of reps. And make sure that it's not too high where it's just going to be really, really easy for you. And when you go all the way up, push through the arms, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And at the end of this rep, she's gonna show you a hand motion that will actually help you engage the chest way, way more. This is something I actually learned not that long ago. And for each exercise, you're gonna do six different exercises in total, three rounds with 60 seconds rest in between each one. So now she's gonna show you. So. When you have your hands with the push-ups to engage the chest as much as possible, you tweet, you're trying to twist your hands in like she was showing you then. So when her hands are down, she's twisting in as if she's trying to bend the bar. This will engage your chest way, way, way more because a lot of time people are not doing it and you're just not going to get the greatest chest workout from whatever type of push-ups that you're doing. So that's just a quick tip that I've wanted to give you. And for this workout, you are gonna need some resistance bands if you're an absolute beginner. And for certain exercises in this workout that she's using the resistance bands, if you find you don't need a resistance band, then don't use one. So if you've got resistance bands, she's about to do dips. So you have your hands over the resistance bands. So you go on your knees, not your feet, otherwise you're not gonna be able to come all the way down. So with dips, be in the position like she is now, and then come all the way down like so, full range of motion. You don't need to go any lower than she is now. If you go any lower, you massively increase the risk of injuring your shoulders. So when you can see her arm comes down, it's like this L shape. So make sure you do it like that and when you come up, really, really squeeze, push through your hands very intensely, squeeze your chest as much as possible. Be pushing all the way through. And if you're someone that needs resistance bands, what we'll do is put links down below for the suppliers that sell some of the most highest quality resistance bands and a variety of different ones. I have many different ones for different exercises. Some require ones that are a lot thicker than others. But yeah, she's using a band where it's challenging her but it's not too easy for her. So she's not, because obviously if it's too easy, she's not gonna get the greatest benefits from that exercise. But yeah, like I said, if you don't need a resistance band, then just don't use one whatsoever. And for that one as well, you wanna do around 20 reps. And like I said, you want 60 seconds of rest in between each exercise. Make sure to do very deep breaths to flood the body with an abundance of oxygen, which is gonna help you be able to do the workout as best as you possibly can. And the next thing she's doing is, first off, she's gonna do standard push-ups, but because she can't do a lot of push-ups, when she's finished doing as many as she can, she's then gonna to swap to knee push-ups. And the reason being is, if you're someone that's not really, really strong, you can't do quite a few push-ups and you just stop when you can't do any more and don't stop to need push-ups, you're not gonna tear the muscle fibers as much as possible. You're not gonna get the best chest workout possible as well. So just do your best. And if you're someone that doesn't know how to do push-ups, I'll put a link for a video up above where I demonstrate and explain how you can do push-ups with perfect form. So as you see, she couldn't get back up at all. So now she's going straight in to the knee push-ups. And with the knee push-ups, make sure your knees are far enough back so the top half of your body when it comes down can be completely flat. And make sure your elbows bend backwards, not sideways. 
If it starts to become too hard for you, where your elbows start to flare out, that's when you should stop doing the reps with push-ups. Like, she started to break her form a bit then. Don't just keep pushing through and doing really bad form. Make sure that your form is perfect. Otherwise, you can run the risk of injury and it's just not helping you go in the direction of perfecting the push-up form. It's better to do less push-ups in perfect form rather than loads of push-ups with not very good form whatsoever. And make sure, like she is, and she showed you the phone at the start, that you do have yourself a timer so you can time the rest intervals. Like I said, you want to do 60 seconds. If you feel that you need a bit longer, a minute and a half, two minutes, don't do any longer than two minutes. But don't have the rest interval too short where when you go on to the next exercise, you feel you can hardly do any reps whatsoever because that's just not going to give you the greatest benefits from this workout. And as you can see, she is making sure to deep breathe and being very conscious of her breath and she's just doing the best that she can do so make sure that you just do the best that you can do as well and next she's doing chest chip well what i would call chest press holds or you could call them chest clasp holds so what she's doing it's got our hands together like that pushing as hard as she possibly can as you can see her hands are starting to shake this may look easy but the harder that you push and the more force you're putting between your hands and with your arms, the more intense it's gonna be. And just position your arms like she is doing exactly in this video that she is demonstrating to you. So yeah, 30 seconds. Then she's gonna rest for around five seconds and then do 30 seconds. And what she's doing is she has her hands in one direction and then she swapped round so her hands are in the other direction because what you're gonna find is Depending on where your hand position is, it's going to engage more of one side of your chest pecs. Yeah, your pecs. So if you just stay with your hands on the one side for both 30 second intervals, you're going to be working one side of the chest way more than, well, loads and loads and loads more than the other one. But by swapping with each 30 seconds with your hands, you'll get in an overall balanced chest workout. So that's just something to be aware of. And yeah, just do the best that you can do. And with the resistance bands, I would recommend that you buy a whole set of them. As you can see, we've got a green one there. The thicker they are, the easier the exercise is gonna be that you're using the resistance band with. And the next one that she is gonna be doing is close grip chin-ups. By doing a close grip, it's going to make you engage your chest as much as you possibly can with chin-ups. And chin-ups are one of those exercises that you want to master. When you're doing chin-ups, make sure that your chin does just go above the bar. You do full range of motion. You come all the way down. It can be a little bit hard to get the resistance bands down as she is struggling a little bit with it. She's not actually used to using resistance bands whatsoever. I've only started to get her to do this type of thing recently. So with chin-ups, have your hands around that side, as you can see, as close as possible. I'm telling her to do closer, and as you can see, she moved them closer. This is really gonna engage your chest a lot more, like I said, with the close grip. So as you can see, all the way down, chin over the bar, do it with medium momentum. Don't do really, really fast reps. You want as much time under tension as possible, which is going to help to tear the muscle fibers as much as possible. So then when you're resting and recovering, they will grow as much as possible. And with this, just do as many reps as you possibly can. Around 12 to 20 reps is absolutely fine. If you can only do 10, that's fine. But just do the best that you can do. We're all at a different level. Just because she can do this amount of reps with this resistance band doesn't necessarily mean that you are you are your only competition, so don't compare yourself against other people. Just compare yourself from workout to workout each single week. And as long as you're making progressions where you're seeing yourself improve with the exercise that you're doing, then that's good. And what I recommend on the last rep like she's doing now is hold at the top as long as possible. And then when you can't hold any longer, do the eccentric part, which is the downward motion 
part of this exercise as slow as you possibly can. And with this one, and this is what she's going to find over time because I'm actually training her every single week at the moment, is in a short, well, after a short while of her doing this type of workout consistently, she'll be able to go down to a band such as the black band that is way, way thinner, and then she'll be able to go down to like the red one that I have, which is one of the thinnest ones, and then she'll be able to get to the point where she'll be able to do loads of reps without any assistance whatsoever. So that is just a brilliant way that you can progress towards doing full chin-ups by having the assistance of a resistance band, like the one she's got in her hand. She's gonna actually use the uh, resistance band then, but I just told her we don't need it for this exercise. And this is again a dip exercise, but because we've already done resistance band dips where it's assisted, I want her to do the unassisted eccentric part of the dips, which is gonna help her to over time progress towards dips fully without assistance. So what you do is you jump up, hold there for a little while, just a second or so, and then come down as slowly as you possibly can. The slower that you come down on the eccentric part, the harder it's gonna be. Don't just fall all the way down, don't just drop. And make sure that you keep those arms bent backwards and close to the top half of your body. Do not be flaring them out whatsoever. And with this one, just do as many reps as you possibly can. You don't wanna do really more than anywhere, say 20 reps. So 12 to 20 reps would be fine. And what you'll find is over time, this is really gonna help you go towards full dips. And she's finding this a right challenge now. She's feeling the burn in her triceps like crazy. And she's very aware that her form, because she's starting to get weaker, starts to break a bit. So that's where we say stop, no more. So yeah, she did really well. Do this workout once or twice every single week and you're gonna notice some amazing benefits. Make sure you do some deep breathing afterwards. And if you have any questions on anything to do with this video, leave them down below. If you'd like me to make any other workout videos, let me know down below. If you like the video, like it down below. Don't forget to share this with others and don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the bell notification button next to the subscribe button to receive a lot more videos from me on a regular basis. Peace.